Assalamualaikum, Louisville. We'll talk about two particular candidates. It's coming up for the election. Election's November 6th. Like two and a half months away, right around the corner. Can't believe anybody's, a lot of people ain't talking about it. School board race, they have like seven candidates in one race, five candidates in another, three in another. Um, Yarmouth, the House of Representatives, the third district, there's three candidates going, an independent, Republican, and a Democrat. So, so it stands to reason that when there's sacrifice, people say, oh, there's got to be self-sacrifice, or there's got to be service, right? Well, it stands to reason when there's sacrifice, there's somebody that's collecting sacrificial offerings. When there's service, somebody is being served. The man who speaks to you about sacrifice speaks to you of slaves and masters, and they intend to be your master. Self-sacrifice, self-service, they want to rule over you. No such thing as altruism. Appeal to people's self-interest. October 9th is the last day you can register to vote. Louisville, Kentucky. We've got to do better. Our turnout rate sucks, okay? Nobody's voting, you mother... <laughs> Democracy. <laughs> Go vote, okay? Go vote. It's how it works, okay? At the very least, if you're not voting, you're not doing any of the things you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> As citizens, okay? As citizens, you're entitled to certain rights, and you are allowed to exercise those rights. Exercise those rights. Call up your congressmen. Call up your representatives. Yell at them if they make a bad issue. Ask them what they think about this. Ask them if there's anything to do about this. Inquire. Start a dialogue. Ten days before the election is the last day that you're allowed to uh, file for a write-in candidacy, okay? So, October 26th. October 26th. It's the last day to file for a writing candidacy, and that's for anything. City council, soil water conservation district supervisor, dog catcher, uh, school board, anything. So that's the last day, 10 days, October 26th. It's the last day you can file. If you wanted to run this year and you did not file for the writing candidacy, then you have no chance. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get in. You're not going to be able to get in there. Because even if they all wrote you in and you did not file for the writing candidacy, you would not win. So even if democracy, even if the people had voted for you, so we have some democratic functions, but it's not, it's not perfect. Actually, we should have, we benefit immensely from an instant runoff system, which would encourage new emerging parties and it wouldn't disqualify people just because they want to be independent. And Kentucky's got two entrenched democratic and republican parties. Very entrenched. In fact, the state regulates their rules and bylaws about how they can be governed. So the state is involved in the political parties here. I don't know if that's any different anywhere else, but the state is heavily involved in it. Um, another thing, the Democratic Party uses this old fucking rooster, which uh, Jake Payne had said that it was racist. I'm not for sure how the rooster is racist, but it, there might be something to that. Also, uh, Jerry Abramson had said that the West End was too poor and too black. That's random, but that's, uh, I found that fascinating. Um, and then actually a, a black person I talked to said it was true. <laughs> so, so he said it and, you know, I guess, I guess it's true. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess all racism bothers me. Black supremacy bothers me. But since white America has been the dominating dickholes, you know, the dickhead dickholes, the dick holes of the dickheads. <laughs> Since uh, white America's been doing that first, I think, until they stand down, then we need integration, man. We need integration and miscegenation. So, here's a questionnaire. Uh, the KFTC had a questionnaire for Cindy Fowler, who's running for the Metro City Council District 14. Cindy Fowler's a Democrat, and Bob Huglin is a uh, GOP Republican candidate. And Bob Henderson is the one that's stepping down. He's the one that's city councilman now of the 14th district, and he's stepping down. So Sidney Fowler answered this on KFTC, uh, in the KFTC voter guide, okay? Number one, what are your plans to address local energy costs, especially for low-income Louisville families who are particularly vulnerable in the face of sharply rising rates? With the Kentucky being a coal state, it's hard to begin looking in new directions for alternative energy. I feel it is of the utmost importance that we look to renewable energy sources so we are not dependent on fossil fuels. I would hope that new technology would be developed that would make using coal cleaner and safer for the environment, but that is only going to last for a time. 
Low-income families are especially hit hard during the cold winter months. There are many agencies available to help with heating costs, but that's not the answer. Only a Band-Aid will help them get through the next energy and bills when it arrives. So check into renewable energies. Nuclear energy would be a possibility, but there's great danger in the operations of such plants. I believe renewable energy is the answer to this very complex question. Renewable en energy, which is a good answer. I wonder what she would think about LG&E's uh, public ownership of Louisville actually buying LG&E and KU and PPL from the Pennsylvanians. Bring Kentucky coal back home. Bring Kentucky coal back home. Is it the responsibility of the Louisville Metro Police Department to enforce federal immigration laws? This is a very hard question. I do not believe policemen should profile or otherwise question likely immigrants on their immigration status if the law, law is not being broken in any way. On the other hand, if an illegal is caught violating the law, then questioning should be allowed. I believe America, as its very essence, should be here for those who are vulnerable and need a home that gives freedom. That is where the birth of America began. I know a lot of citizens disagree with this, but somewhere along the way, unless you're a Native American, your ancestors were also looking for a place of freedom and opportunity. I know the Germans, my German ancestors, came here illegally. They were illegal terror or uh, immigrants, <laughs> not terrorists. They could have been. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I very know very little bit about my Grimshover German ancestors on my mother's side. Uh, they came in 1869, lived in Sanford Town, Kentucky. Why they came, I'm not totally for sure. What's your strategic, strategic plan for housing Louisville's vulnerable, low-wage earning families and children? My daughter worked for two years as a JCPS teacher at Wayside Christian Mission in downtown Louisville. I understand firsthand from her experience in volunteering in her, her class the struggles these children face daily. A living wage should be the right of all workers when two parent families are both working CCC. Is there to bridge the gap from high cost of child care? I feel these vulnerable families should be give, given first priority for public housing. Unemployment is a big issue that has been catapulted many into uh, homelessness. We must address the many issues that put families in danger of homelessness through the efforts of the country, state, and federal levels. So she cares about working people. She cares about immigrants. She cares about uh, clean energy. What are your plans for working with LG&E, the APCD, and residents of both the Cane Run and Mill Creek areas to improve conditions for the residents? I recently attended a meeting concerning the Coal Ash Mountains in southwest Jefferson County. This issue does not have any good fixes. The families living in and around these mountains are being put in jeopardy daily by groundwater and airborne coal ash. We must find a solution to this dangerous situation. Cancer rates in and around these areas are of a much higher rate. In other areas of the county, I live between them both and have cancer two times myself. Wow. Okay, so she she directly understands what's going on. Cindy Fowler is a champion of working class people. I think I would vote for Cindy Fowler if I was in the Metro 14th District. I have lived and worked in the shadows of both plants most all my life. The APCD must respond with an acceptable means of protecting the community and lg and &E must follow the recommendations to bring about the change that will bring the plants into compliance. So that's what she says. Here's a quote from Arturo Rodriguez, Latino labor activist. I think the biggest challenge for us is to ensure that our children have a better future than what we've had that our children, our future, have an opportunity to be respected, to be treated as equal human beings, to get a decent education, to have opportunities that we did not have in our life, lifetime, and we need to fight for that. The third district U.S. representative race has John A. Yarmuth, who's the Democrat candidate, also has Robert L. DeVore Jr., the independent candidate, and Brooks Wicker, the Republican candidate. So here in the uh, voter guide for May for this primary, John Yumuth, Yarmuth answered several questions. And I might have to do another video on this just to complete it. But uh, over the past few years, mountaintop removal, coal mining, and the related valley fills have become, become a widely debated public issue. So, mountaintop coal mining. What's your position on removing the tops of ridge lines and mountains and filling valleys with rock and dirt from coal mining? <laughs> kind of a leading question. The Farnsley didn't answer, so they put no response for all of them, which is effective. It shows that they 
and did not respect them enough to answer their questions. So John Yarmuth, I believe we need to halt the devastating and irreversible damage of mountaintop removal. That is why I've called on the Obama administration to take steps to ensure that this is irresponsible practice. Uh, that this irresponsible practice no longer threatens the Appalachian region or the health and security of its residents. I'm also a lead co-sponsor of the Clean Water Protection Act, which would change environmental standards to end mountaintop removal mining. Clean Water Protection Act would stop mountaintop removal. John A. Yarmouth wants to stop mountaintop removal. The Clean Water Protection Act would amend the Water Pollution Control Act to clarify that the fill material which mining companies are presently permitted to dump in valleys and streams and valleys cannot be waste material from mountaintop removal sites. Currently, over 92% of, of Kentucky's electricity comes from burning coal. 92%, they said, comes from burning coal. Kentucky's electricity rates have also risen 41% <laughs> over the last five years. So Kentucky, a coal state, our electricity rates have raised over 41% over the last five years. What's your vision for Kentucky's energy future? What energy policies would you support or propose? I believe our country must have a more balanced energy policy that maximizes our domestic energy resources, including clean and renewable sources of energy, and promotes conservation. For the sake of our national security, we cannot afford to rely on foreign sources of energy. And for the sake of our environment, we cannot afford to rely on resources that are not clean. That's why I support a legislation that makes historic investments in new energy-efficient technologies reduces emissions and moves us towards a greater state of energy independence. All good answers. Tax cuts benefiting the wealthy have played a major role in limiting our public investments in some of the most important functions of our federal government. Kentuckians are feeling the impact of budget cuts to job training programs and public sector jobs with Pell Grants and EPA's ability to protect our water other key functions of our federal government. Meanwhile, the wealth gap continues to grow. There are initiatives in Congress to roll back the Bush era tax cuts for the wealthy to protect public sector jobs that strengthen our communities. Where do you stand on these initiatives? What other ideas do you have about our budget priorities and how to best support them? Yarmouth, our budget is a statement of our nation's values and priorities and it should reflect the standard of balance, fairness, and shared responsibility. That includes eliminating the Bush era tax cuts for the top earners. The well-off and well-connected should pay their fair share, which is why I proposed an amendment to this year's budget that would reinstate Clinton-era tax rates for incomes over $1 million and institute a Buffett rule to ensure the middle-income families do not have a higher tax rate than millionaires and billionaires. So roll back the Bush tax cuts. I support, I support the administration's 2013 budget, which makes substantial investments in education, our social safety net, and clean energy innovation. The budget increases funding and education by $1.7 billion while helping to make college more affordable through increases in grants, including Pell Grants, loans, and tax credits. The budget invests $6 billion in child care subsidies for working families while also preserving Medicare for seniors and Medicaid for low-income Americans. And the budget increases funding to develop and deploy proven renewable energy technologies by reducing funding for fossil fuels. It provides support for new technologies that conserve energy while creating jobs such as rebates for energy efficient home retrofits to reduce American families energy bills and our dependence on coal and other fossil fuels. Kentucky is one of the four most difficult states for former, former felons to apply and receive their voting rights back. Over 186 thousand Kentuckians have lost their right to vote because of our disenfranchisement laws. What's your position on the issue of restoring voting rights for former felons. Yarmouth, I believe that people who have completed their sentences and have proven themselves rehabilitated should regain the right to vote by strengthening social ties and providing a means for positive community engagement. Reinstating this right would help reintegrate ex-offenders into free society. Undocumented immigrants, blah, blah, blah. So what do you think about immigration? Yarmouth, I believe that our nation's immigration system is broken and Congress should enact comprehensive Immigration reform. Our immigration laws ought to reflect both our interests and values as Americans, which is why I support reforms that are tough, fair, and practical. That includes securing our borders, cracking down on employers who hire illegal immigrants and require those who came here without our permission to pass background checks, learn our language, and pay taxes while they earn the chance to become citizens. So, 
it's a diplomatic view of immigration, but great responses for the coal and energy and for poverty and for um, the uh, voter rights for former felons. Uh, when people come back from prison, we should welcome with wide open arms. Uh, Neil Miles, when Neil Miles comes back to Gallatin County, Gallatin County should completely accept them 100% with no questions. He did his time. Now welcome him back into the community. And allow him to vote. He should be allowed to vote. Well, it's not felon, but...